Hello and welcome back to another Hit Film tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a disintegration effect similar to the one seen in The Mandalorian, when The Mandalorian shoots someone with his disruptor blaster. Rifle. I don't know whether it's blaster or rifle, so just whichever you prefer, insert it there. So, this is the effect that we're going to be creating today. So, let's get on with this tutorial. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is grab your footage. I have filmed this against a green screen, and I have already kind of pre-prepared it by cutting out the surrounding background because my green screen didn't fill the frame. And then you also want to film, say, your t-shirt or a jumper or a jacket just being thrown up in front of a green screen. And this is to create kind of like the item of clothing that doesn't get evaporated. You will also want to get some form of smoke element. And then one final thing that you're going to want is a background. I found this background on Pexels. I will leave a link in the description. It's a really good picture. It's quite a large picture, so it allows you to zoom in to a specific part. So the first thing that you're going to want to do now you've got all of your elements is you want to create a new composite shot. Right click on the footage and select make composite shot. Then I'm going to name this, and then I'm going to hit OK. The one issue with this is it ends as soon as I get shot, and I would quite like this to go on for a few more seconds. So I'm going to set this to 4 seconds. And this now gives some time afterwards for the sparks and the smoke to kind of settle and calm. So I'm going to key out the background of my footage. And I'm just going to use the chroma key effect, because I am inside of HitFilm Pro version 14, however you can create this effect inside of HitFilm Express. I'm just going to do a basic key. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on different methods of keying, then there is a link to that video in the description and also in the top right corner. I am also going to be using a spill removal that just cleans up any green spill I'm also just gonna reduce the intensity of that because some of the yellow on my shirt is being removed so I'm just gonna reduce that so it retains some of its color and then I'm also going to grab a matte cleaner right so I have now kind of done this basic key and I'm not gonna put the background in and scale my footage up because I'm just gonna build almost like the base so I've now just scaled myself up in this shot. So as soon as I've disappeared here, I want to explode into smoke and also some sparks. So I'm going to grab this gun smoke, which is some stock footage, once again from Action VFX. And I kind of want it to start a bit into it, so that then it's not just starting from nowhere. I'm also going to scale this up, rotate it, and then just position it and this is starting to look decent. So now I'm going to add the t-shirt element in, which was just me throwing my t-shirt up in front of the green screen. So now, given that it's the same green screen and it's got the same lighting setup, I'm just going to copy the effects that I used over to this. And you can see that worked pretty well. And it's also the same mask shape, so I can copy this as well. Now we have a t-shirt that just flies through the air. And now it's kind of small. If you compare the scale of the t-shirt here, it's covering most of the middle of the screen. And now it's a lot less than the middle of the screen. So I'm just going to scale this up and angle it slightly. This is kind of just throwing all the elements together before we start doing more detailed work. Okay, so now we're getting there, it's just we want to add the sparks in. So I'm now going to search in the effects tab for the particle simulator. I'm now going to drag and drop this onto the timeline. And I'm going to set its start point to the frame before I disappear. And then going to go back to the first frame of the particle simulator. I'm going to go into the emitter settings, go into the uh, particle systems. Then I'm going to go to general and set the particles per second to 1000. And then I'm going to start keyframing, move ahead by one frame, and then set it to zero. And these particles are very slow, so we're also going to want to increase their speed. So I'm going to go into the movement settings, 
and change their speed from 200 to 1000 as well. There still aren't enough particles, so I'm going to go back to the first frame of them being created and set this to 5000 and see if this is enough. Quite a lot of this is trial and error to try and get something that you'd quite like the look of. So now we've got this, it's got a few more particles, we can always go back and change that later. Now what I'm going to do is change the shape of the emitter from a point to being a quad. And this will now create a square. And I want to kind of roughly create the shape of me with this emitter. So I've now created this particle simulator that is roughly the same size as me. So another thing that I'm going to change is the scale of these particles. At the moment they're set to 100%, which is making them quite large, whereas I kind of want them at around 20%. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to activate motion blur for this particle simulator layer. As you can see, that kind of stretches them out slightly more. However, if they were to move faster, then they would be even more stretched. So I'm going to go over to the movement settings and change their speed once again. I've set them to 1200. The one issue with this is their trajectory is random and I kind of want them to eventually start to fall. So I'm also going to add a force to this particle simulation. So on the forces tab I'm going to press this green plus which is the insert force button and that will create a new force and the f first force that you add will always be automatically set to being a directional force which is basically gravity. But I also still want there to be some variation in how they're moving. So I'm going to add another force, and this force is going to be a turbulence force. You can now see how they kind of explode and then go a bit all over the place, but they're still drifting downwards. They are starting a tiny bit too early, so I'm just going to move them back by one frame. I'm going to be using the color vibrance effect. And if I drag and drop this onto the particle simulation layer, you can already see that it's looking a bit brighter. I'm now going to change this color to be more of a yellowy color. Still orange, but a tiny bit more yellow. And that is now adding in the color that we're going for here. Of course, this is completely up to you as to what color you want. I want these particles to glow more. So then in the effects tab, I'm going to search for the glow. And then I'm going to drag and drop this onto the particle simulator. Now. I'm going to increase the intensity. Zoom in so I can actually see what I'm doing to these particles. I'm also just going to decrease the radius. Once again, increase the intensity. So now as you can see, these particles are glowing a lot more than they were before. And they look a bit more like sparks. I'm also going to work on the movement of these particles slightly more. So I'm going to select the particle simulate the particle system and particle systems in the particle simulator layer. And then I'm going to go over to the lifetime tab. And then on the acceleration from X, Y, and Z, I'm going to select this middle preset, which has decreasing value over time. So I'm going to select this, and this will just mean that they start faster and end ever so slightly slower. And I'm also going to do a similar thing but with alpha by going over to the alpha setting in the lifetime tab and change its type from off to being a gradient. Then I'm going to create a new point and this point is going to be black. This means that the particles are going to start fully opaque and then end transparent. So something that is missing from this would be kind of like a really bright flash. You could also use some fire stock footage and kind of use that. And So I'm just going to use a light flare. So what I'm going to have to do is create a new plane. I'm going to set this plane to being black and I'm going to call this plane flare. And now this has just covered everything with a massive black plane. So now in the effects tab I'm going to search for light flare. Then I'm going to drag and drop this light flare onto that black plane layer. As you can see it's created a light flare. I'm now going to right click on the plane layer and select its blend mode to being add, which will make it transparent in the darker areas and brighter in the non-dark areas. I'm then going to use the on-screen controls just to position this light flare somewhere around my middle. Then I'm going to go into the flare type and I'm going to change it from 105 millimeters prime over to flashlight white. I'm going to leave the the rays on 0 0.20. So 
So I'm going to start its animation off at 0, 0 for both intensity and scale. Then I'm going to start keyframing for both of these properties. Then I'm going to move ahead by two frames and set the intensity to 2 and the scale to 600. Actually, I'm going to move ahead by two frames and set the intensity to 3 and the scale to 1800. As you can see, this has just completely filled the frame, apart from some small bits around the edges, with a really bright lens flare. Then I'm going to move ahead by three frames, and I'm going to set the intensity to zero, and the scale also to zero. And this now creates more of an impact, that in a way works as a transition between there being full person to there being floating t-shirt sparks and smoke. And it's kind of a bright flash of light. And this would be where if you really wanted to show your character being hit, you could animate a laser blast. And if you also want to learn how to create that effect, I did a tutorial on that. So hit the I in the right top corner of the screen and check the description. I'm just going to play around with this light flare animation. I want it to be slightly slower. I also want to set the colour of this lens flare to be kind of more of a fiery colour. I'm going to go into the other elements controls and set the colour to more of an orange. And to kind of finish off this light flare, I'm going to add heat distortion. This will kind of change up its shape a bit more and make it look a bit more random. I'm going to increase the scale, and that's now made something that looks quite cool. And uh, these don't look very well integrated with one another. So I'm now going to find in the effects tab the light wrap. And I'm going to drag and drop this onto the t-shirt layer first. And then going to set the source layer to being the panoramic photo of Rocky Mountain. And as you can see, that's kind of just wrapped the color round. Then these sparks that I created. I'm going to add a light wrap layer, and I'm going to drag and drop this above the glow. Now, one thing that you may notice is that you've got some sparks over the background, some sparks are over the t-shirt, and some sparks are over the smoke. But when you open up the light wrap settings, the source layer only gives you one option. So something I often do is I create a new grade layer. You can name this grade layer whatever you like, and then you just want to put this below the layer. So I'm using these sparks, but I want it to overlay everything under here. So I'm then going to place the grade layer above all of these layers, and then I'm going to target the grade layer with the light wrap. You can play around with those settings. So so far we have created this explosion that is followed by kind of the t-shirt, the sparks, and the smoke. Of course you can play around with the keyframes and just kind of get something that you like. In fact, I'm just going to spread these keyframes out slightly more. I feel like this comes on a bit too soon. I'm now going to do a final grade for this as we are almost done. And now you have created the Mandalorian-inspired disintegration evaporation style effect. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, then please leave a like and subscribe for more videos. Um, and I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, then please ask me down in the comments below and I will try to respond. And also follow me on Instagram at ndpproductions underscore workshop. I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.